I had all the lines, all the numbers. The number trains were my favorite trains. That's why I was called All City. I used to hit the 40 car layups in the four line, the elevated track. Bomb all the insides. Next day it pulls out, you hit 50 cars overnight. Some going to four, some going to five, some going to two. So your ship was all over. I hit every line, every station, man, just to say that I did it. The jacket came with two pockets. When we went to go painting, the jacket ended up with eight to ten pockets. We sewed in pockets, man, for markers, for freight cans. We were straight, man. We didn't pay. We get a shopping bag. We used to just take fucking paint, man. Two big shopping bags like you think somebody came from the supermarket. Came from the paint store, man. Kill the yard. We never paid for paint. That's the legendary Stay High tag. This is the original tag. This is the way it came out when I first started. But as time went by, you know, we fixed it up. It got a little more sharper and everything in detail. When I first started out, my smoker, he had a round head, man. The guy had a round head, like a donut. <laughs> You know, it was funny, man. When I look back, man, at the shit I did years ago, it looks funny now. It looks like a kid did it, but it was me. You know, when you first start, it's like your first album. You know, hey, you know, what do you expect? You know, you, know, you just want to get out there. 1969, man, I was like 18, 19 years old. 18, 19 when I started. And at that time, these guys called me an old man because these other guys were 12, 13, 14. We got a video called Kings of Broadway, and there's a writer on there, if you're familiar with Stan 153, he's on there, and he says, oh, Wayne was older than everybody else, while well, Wayne was in his 20s. He blew up the spot, he, you know, tell everybody I'm in my 20s. And then these other cats are like teenagers, but they're riding with me, because they know they with me, they're going to get their shit shown. So they, they're smart. And me write with Stay High, so his name comes up in a flick, my name will be next to him. Guys, smart, man. You gotta use your shit. This is a real nice man. I love this. This is the legendary stick man. They call him the stick man. I call him the smoker because as you can see, he's smoking. That's what he does. He smokes pot. That's why sometimes you'll see me write down, legalize the weed. Make it legal and have less headaches, less murders, less trouble. Make it legal. Legalize the weed. That's my slogan. Maybe one day they'll do it. If they don't do that, I'll get medical marijuana. What the hell? <laughs> I get medical marijuana. I got pain. I need a. I need a joint. You know, you gotta do what works, man. And this is another piece here with the dots on it. Little uh, dot piece. Yeah, this is just what I did on trains and. You know, you got the guys that do this stuff, man. You know, hey, I don't knock nobody, man. But these guys, some guys do their names and I can't even make it out, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm a writer. And if I can't make it out, what's the uh, a regular person on the street, the average Joe? He's going to be stuck in there about an hour, half an hour to an hour trying to make out what this guy's name and what it says. You know, make it legible. I mean, you could do all of the arrows and all that, but still make it where you can read it, man. I can't even make this shit out. And I'm a writer. It gets frustrating sometimes. I'm like, what's this kid write? Well, write your name in, in, in simple letters next to it when you finish so, so somebody knows what the hell it is. You know, I could change my style. I could do that too. I could do all those arrows and all that. But you know what? Nine out of ten of my peers told me, it says, Wayne, work with what got you where you at. What got you started, where you at, what got you to where you at, your status. Stay with, stick with what you've been doing. Why change it after all these years, right? It wouldn't make much sense. So they said, Wayne, keep it simple, stupid, they said. And that's what I did. I kept it simple and I, I just, just do it this way. I mean, I got the status now where I can just do a tag. Not that I'm bragging or nothing, but it's true. I can do a tag and everybody knows who I am. All I got to do is just draw the smoker. Little smoking guy with a joint and everybody, oh, that's stay high. Before I had to write my damn name out all the time. Now I cut it short. Just do the smoker. Stay high was here. That's all. That's all I gotta do. See, this is one thing in the '80s that people almost forgot about. There was a real emphasis on the artwork on the outside of the train. People could burn like never before. What was missing was emphasis on tag style. A lot of people that could do burners could not write their names 
elegantly like it was in the 70s. Back in my day, you would see this, Voice of the Ghetto, and it was like a picture frame on the corner of the card. The dude, Stay High, would take the ad down, have a clean slate, and just put that tag there with a uni and two different colors and the same marker. Guy was a fucking genius, man. That, to me, was like more exciting than 99% of the burners in the 80s. Yeah, all, all lines, that's why I was called All City. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. I had all the lines, all the numbers. The number trains were my favorite trains. I did letters too, but you know, letters, man, eh. Cause when I first started, man, I, I, I hit every station. Just when I first started, I, I didn't even know any better. <laughs> I hit every line, every station, man. You know, most of them are gone now, that's years ago. But just to say that I did it. And at one time, I ruled the buses too, man. I was, I was pretty up on buses. But I had stiff competition on buses. There was a guy named Clyde. This guy, he really got up on buses. He gave me a run for my money. You gotta be, you gotta be truthful, man. You gotta give credit where credit is due. Clyde killed the buses, man. But I lived a couple of blocks from the bus terminal, so I would go in there at night, man, when it was slow, and I'd hit buses, just like you hit one bus, turn around, another bus, hit it, walk down, hit a bus, hit another bus. You know, that's the way it was, man. Same thing in the, I used to hit the 40 car layups on the four line. The elevated tracks, you know, like number four train, from 183rd up to like Fordham Road. They got like, like uh, the cars are 10 cars each train, they got about five or six trains lined up one behind the other with the lights out. So that's 40 to 50 cars right there. So you go inside at night and markers all different colors, bomb all the insides. Next day it pulls out, you hit 50 cars overnight and they break up. Some go on the four, some go on the five, some go on the two. So your ship was all over. They interchange, they change. Same thing with the fronts. Back in the days, the front car coming into the station, that was my shit. That's like leading the train. You're in front car, so that's your train. You're leading the train. I was up so much at times, bro, I should be in the front car of the 10 cars, and at the end, the back car. You get That's a lot of riding to get to shit on the front and the back because they were all mixed up. So when they throw two, car, two trains together like that, that's either you're lucky or you've done a lot of cars. So I think it's the latter one. I did a lot of cars. So that's how the name gets to be on different trains, leading different cars. They break them up and split them up. It's little things that it's to do, little tricks of the trade. You know, a lot of guys didn't know that. The writer's bench. Everybody knew this is where we meet at. The writer's bench. We also have writer's corner. Writer's bench and writer's corner. Two different places. One is in Manhattan and the other one's in the Bronx. Writer's Bench, 149th Street. Writer's Corner, 188 in Upper Manhattan. But that's where we would meet. But back in the days, you could meet a guy on the train, man. You on a train, maybe tagging. There could be a guy in the same car with you. He he see you tagging. He know it's safe. And he pull out his mark and you say, oh, shit, yo, man. Oh, you right? Yo, yo. You meet a cat just like that. As soon as I pull my mark out and hit a tag, yo, stay out on 49. Next thing you know. 10 fucking guys coming, man. I had to run from these guys. Back in the day, 149th Street had a little bridge, overpass. And I'd be on this side, and the train would pull in downtown. they see me on this side, through the train, and i see about 10 guys in the car all at the, at the windows. And i see them getting ready to come out. Man, I had to take off up the stairs to get away from these guys. Cause they want me to give them autographs and shit. And when I used to give autographs on 149th Street, man, I used to have lines. Fucking guys lined up to sign their books. And that created a problem because the cops want to know what the fuck is going on here. Was this a raffle or going on a trip or giving out cheese or what? They don't know. So I had to take off, man, to avoid these guys. Two or three guys, I, I don't mind signing. But see, 10 or 15 guys all circling around. They all got markers on them, smelling like paint, got cans shaking. You hear the ball. Man, I had to get the fuck out of there, man. Let's make it out of here. It, it was good, though. It was fun to get that kind of recognition, man. They didn't do that for nobody else. Well, they don't chase nobody else to get an autograph. What do you mean? I'm lucky, bro. Lucky. Luckiest writer on the planet. Let me see if I got any interesting pictures here, maybe. <laughs> well, I got a picture here when I was in L.A. I love L.A., man. You know who got me on my first trip over to LA? Frank, 151. 
That's my peeps right here. The book, the magazine, Franklin 51. They also own a barbershop, which they call a chop shop. Because they're chopping your shit up. When you go there, you get a haircut, you get chopped up. That's why it's called a chop shop. <laughs> I never pay for a haircut. I don't want them to hear me say that. But they know it's true. Look at that. Camera's rolling? Yeah. Oh, we got Cap 1. Arch Nemesis. You ever heard of Cap? Yeah. Oh, you know what Cap was famous for, right? Yeah, for going over. Going over, man. See, Cap never wanted to get a... He, he praises me, man. That guy bows to me. He loves me because he knows this is one guy I better not fuck with because if I get into some shit with this guy, he gets up more than me. If I fuck with him and he starts crossing out my shit, he'll be in trouble. So he he, he didn't mess with me. Oh, Wayne, 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 he praises me, idolizes me. He's smart. Because if somebody gets up more than you, you don't want to fuck with them because I'll cross all his shit out. Hot 110, anything. I'll make up a number and just go over his shit. But so we never came to that. He's all right. Except when he starts drinking uh, two six-packs of Budweiser's, one behind the other, he turns fire engine red. And, he <laughs> and then he started acting crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? But he's, other than that, he's all right guy. Look at that. Name right on the garbage can. Look at that. Stay high tag. You could have caught that. Did you catch that when you came here? You didn't even see it, right? This is when I was down in Florida, South Beach, man. Chilling with my homies. Flavor Flav lookalike with the yellow shades. Look at that. <laughs> Had fun. That young lady there, to my right, your left, that's the young lady that's doing my book, man, right now. A uh, 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 biography she's doing to me, man. I can't wait to do it. It's, it's about finished now. Thank God for that. Never knew how long it took took to do a book, man. A book is, is it's no easy task, trust me. And I'm not even writing it. But she chose to write about me. I appreciate that. Sky. Her name is Sky. Her real name is Sky. Would you believe that? She says sometimes she's sky high. I say, well, I stay high. You can be sky high. <laughs> man, that's uh, against the law, man. It's against my religion to pay for pain. Back then, you used to go and just, like I said, your jacket. It came with two pockets. When we went to go painting, the jacket ended up with eight to ten pockets. We sewed in pockets, man, for markers, pockets for freight cans. We were straight, man. We didn't pay. We get a shopping bag. We go in the store. They call it boosting the day. Back then, we just shoplifting. That's what we called it back then. Now they call it boosting. They make a nice terminology. Eat boost, boost, boost. Boost mobile. That's the only boost I know. But I'm saying, we used to just take fucking paint man get bags save it up one night we're ready to go cut two big shopping bags like you think somebody came from the supermarket came from the paint store man what are you crazy we're going to hit these layers we're going to bomb but be careful how you say bomb the system we can't say that no more with the terrorists running around so you know we used to do kill the yards we never paid for paint bottom line we didn't pay for paint we took it we went to the store took off spray starch caps that make letters come out this big or jiffy oven cleaner and letters one spray come out this big but you use a lot of cans maybe use one can for three letters but that's how you did it fast and quick and you're out but against the rules and regulations to pay for paint back in my day now they pay for it five six dollars a can what are you crazy Nighttime was always the best time. You know, less traffic, less cops. Unless their cops are laying for you, sometimes they wait for guys. They fucking wait for guys inside the tunnel, man. We used to get chased from the track workers with those big, long, big things. Big metal thing, man. They hit you with that shit, it'll kill you. Chasing you. Mind your business, man. You're only a track worker. Get the fuck out. You know, what are you? You ain't a cop. You're a track worker. Leave me alone. I'm here writing. You fix the tracks and I'll do writing. That's it. Tell them. Well, my best time was at nighttime, man. It was nice and quiet, the weekends, you know. And the, the best thing to do back then was to go by yourself. You go by yourself because you ain't going to tell on yourself. But if you go with three, four guys, and guys get caught, they might tell on you. Who's that guy? Oh, that's there. You know, they give you up. Come on, man. Not like there was a reward or nothing. 
You know, I always worried about that, man. If they put out a reward for me, yo, motherfuckers would turn me in. Boom! Money talk, they'll turn you in. So, uh, better to go by yourself. I did that in Seattle. Canvas is bigger than me. <laughs> Yeah, it's a legendary cornbread. It's cornbread. With the crown. It's all he writes is cornbread. This is when I went to Philadelphia and we both met each other. As you can see on the bottom there, plenty of spray paint for the occasion. He was ready. And then I I wrote, they gave us a, a cookout, a picnic. We had people dancing. It was fun, man. As you can see here, we're writing on some uh, some panel boards. It was a great occasion, you know, because I had never met him. So that's when I went down to Philadelphia to meet the legendary writer, the king, as he say, of Philadelphia. And I've really never seen this guy do any pieces, but you don't have to do pieces to get up, you know. He just used the tag, Cornbread the Legend. That's all the guy ever wrote. Well, that's what he was known for, Cornbread the Legend. That's all he wrote, and that's so, you know. But uh, we had an art show once, and he had a couple of pieces. I mean, the guy, he's an artist. But I guess he kept it simple. He just wrote Cornbread the Legend. It's like Kilroy was here, you know. Just keep it simple. Here's a couple of nice day high pieces I've done. Those are canvases. Really nice, man. Look at that. Look at the colors in that, man. Really dope, man. I love this. And this is uh, fluorescent. Fluorescent markers and fluorescent spray paint. This actually glows under the purple light. You know, the old, that uh, violet, black light, they call it. Oh my God, this thing lights up like the daytime, man. Awesome. One guy owns these pieces, man. We won't mention no names, but he know who he is. He owns those pieces. Got an old group shot here. Got a group shot here of some of my peers. The famous, legendary, old school himself, old man writer, Lava 1 and 2. You see now, his name is Lava, but he uses number 1 and 2. He's smart, right? So if he uses 1, nobody else can be Lava 2. See how you think, guys think? I'll be lava one and two. So if anybody's going to be a lava, they have to be a three or or three or on up to a whatever number it could be. But it has to be after three. This is a great show we had. I'm in there somewhere. This is a Stay High 149 smoker on some type of light uh, stanchion out in San Francisco. It's the first time I went out to San Francisco, city by the bay. Last but not least... Nice stay high piece. Look at that color, man. Look at that blue. Pretty blue. Would you believe that's done with a marker? That's a marker. Can you believe that's a marker? Doesn't look like a marker, right? That's a marker. You know how big that thing was? Courtesy of my man, Jim Sharp. He supplied the uh, the instruments to do that, man. The markers. That's a great marker, man. It's wide. It's wider than a uni wide. I never really got chased, but I remember one time... Riding down on 70, 79th Street, I think it was, in Broadway, on the number one line. Back in the day, 79th Street and Broadway on the one train. And you know that's four tracks. Express, local, no, wait a minute. Local, express, express, and local. So I'm all the way on the local side going uptown. And there's some guys riding on the downtown local. So there's four tracks. And I'm riding, and damn, and, and I didn't have any paint. So the four guy, the guys over here, I said, yo, man, let me hold your, uh, your spray can. I jumped down on the tracks, crossed all four of them shits, man. Now, is that crazy or what? There's four, tra four lanes there, so train expresses coming and going, man. If you don't listen and hear that track rattle, make that little noise, you, fucking, you could get killed, ran over. So I skip over all those tracks, go on the other side, get the guy's can, take it, Jump back down, back on back onto my side, and I hit the wall. Bam, Stay High 149. These fucking guys went crazy. Oh, we met Stay High. You know who it was? On the other side, the guy? Snake 1, Coco 144. It was the Broadway writers, those guys from Broadway. Snake, Coco, and Hoy 56 or something like that. But it was four Broadway writers. And it, and it bugged them out to see me jump all the way down to borrow a can. to come back on that side to write my name. That was a nice little story, you know, and, and, and he told me that the other day. I had really forgot about it. 
And when he told me last, I said, oh, shit, yeah, that was, yeah, I remember doing that shit. I said, that was crazy then. I wouldn't do that shit now, crossing all no fucking two express tracks going the opposite way and two local tracks. That's crazy. But back then, when you're young and you're riding, you don't be thinking like that. I wouldn't do that shit now, but I was crazy back then. I did it just to get, just to get up. Just to borrow his can because I had no spray. I had a marker, but they was hitting with paint. I wanted to hit with paint. They said they 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 laugh today at that story when I tell them. They say, yo, you remember when I jumped down all those tracks? They said, yes, they are. You was crazy, but that's how I met. That's when I first met them.